Dr. Bloomer, in recent studies with Capsimax, mm -hmm. there's been an indication that you could expend up to an extra 100 calories or burn off an extra 100 calories mm -hmm. using this product. And what would that amount to? What would, what would 100 calories look like in terms of some food, you know, a slice well, of pizza, a piece of bread, you know? And, and well, if it's pizza, you're not going to get a whole lot of pizza. If you're having, you know, your a medium to large banana, an orange, uh, that sort of thing. Um, it would be roughly a glass of milk, you know, okay. skim milk or 1% milk. It would be roughly a glass. When I say a glass, I'm talking about eight ounce glass mm -hmm. of juice would be roughly 100 calories, perhaps slightly higher than that. But that would give some indication in terms of food intake. Now, in terms of uh, exercise, as I alluded to earlier, you know, an average size individual training at a, a fairly high intensity, moderate to high intensity, is probably going to expend roughly 100, you know, 80 to 100 calories per 10 minutes of, of exercise. We're talking aerobic exercise. Okay. If it's anaerobic exercise or resistance exercise, it's probably going to take them a bit longer to expend, you know, that number of calories. But that's really not the main objective of that, that form of exercise. So that gives some indication of what 100 calories may be in relation to food as well as in relation to exercise. So 10 minutes of exercise roughly would be burning 100 yeah, calories. Yeah, based, based on our work in the lab where we actually mm -hmm. measure energy expenditure during exercise, that would be about right. Now granted, a larger person is going to be higher than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Someone that's smaller may be a little lower than that. If you train much harder in mm -hmm. terms of intensity, it may be a little bit higher, but that's, that's a rough idea. So that would be a, an extra 100 calories expended per exercise session. Mm -hmm. So what could that amount to in terms of weight loss? Well, I mean, Something if, modest, but still weight loss. Yeah, right? I, I think over time, again, assuming that the effect is maintained over mm -hmm. time with the same exposure to the, the treatment of the supplement, uh, we could see, again, if we factor in that someone's exercising or being physically active you know, every day of the week over the course of the whole year, it's likely going to amount to roughly about an 8 or 10 pound loss, which is significant indeed. The question is, can a person maintain that and will they deviate at all from their because, well, I'm using this, therefore I can go ahead and uh -huh. eat this because I'm using this supplement. I think that would be a, a gross mistake. You need to maintain your exercise, maintain the dietary intake, and then use these things as adjuncts to right. the healthy lifestyle approach. But if you had committed to the healthy lifestyle approach, mm -hmm. this could add a loss, as it I, were. I think, I think so. I mm -hmm. think so. You know, okay. ba based on the evidence, you know, because mm -hmm. I'm a scientist, so look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. Based on the evidence, the evidence is clear that in the acute studies, it, the majority of, of data anyway, do support the idea that capsaicinoid containing products mm -hmm. will increase energy expenditure and may also decrease appetite. It may also increase lipolysis or the use of fat as a fuel mm -hmm. source. So now we have to take them into a human subject population who's using it on a day-to-day -day basis over the course of time and individuals again can experiment for themselves. Certainly when you look at the dietary supplement industry as a, as a whole, mm -hmm. capsaicinoids I believe have more evidence for effect than a lot of other products that people are likely using today, put it that way. Well that's very good news.